passed on in 2008. My mom became a spiritual godmother to my husband. And that is why when my mom passed on, my husband thought his life was over. Every, when the uh, promotion started, each time my mom came, he said, not yet, still more coming every year. Until she passed on, she kept on telling him, still more coming, still more coming. And everything she said came to pass. With all that has happened, I believe my mom's vision has finally come true 43 years after. The second friend of my father was a urologist. He made sure my husband was a urologist. Professor Mposon from the University of Ibadan. Will you call that destiny? Will you call the way we met? And the fact that my father-in-law, the late, my late father-in-law, moved us from the ancestral home to Umiru. Things just don't happen, he settled us. From then on, my husband's life has been on three pillars. His God that made him, Stare that molded him, and medicine, everything of his he did in medical precision. You take history, which is the problem, you investigate, make a diagnosis, and make the decision. Some people found it odd. We medics, we don't have time for storytelling. It's either this or that. And you go to theater. When you go to theater, when you come out, Relatives are waiting. The first thing is, how was the surgery? Among those relatives, there are people who wish the operation never succeeded. Because they had their own timetable. And then there are those who are truly happy that the operation succeeded. So all the things my husband did, it was like having dinner with the devil. Devil in the sense that they say, when you're having dinner with the devil, you use a long spoon so that your two fingers don't touch each other. You don't know what the devil has put in, a, in his uh, nails so that they touch you and when you take to your mouth and you eat, you, it will be over. So in the morning, when the devil is calling you to find out if you are dead, he asks you, your voice has changed. Just to make sure that you are the same one. And you answer back and say, no, it is that nice food of yours that has made my voice to change. Thank you very much for making me have such a good meal with you. So he always prepared for the battle. That's why they said he was obsessed with success. Because each time you pass one battlefield, you prepare for the other. After all, life itself is battle. I'll never complain, I had him for 40 years. I'll be very ungrateful if I did that. There are people who have had marriages of lesser years. I thank God and I have accepted. We, we were a team. He looked over my back and I looked over his. In marriage, we all know there's nothing like 
there's always one person sacrificing more than the other. It could be 40, 70, but everything just came to 100. We understood that. And as a couple, we walked through there. The fact that a vision was uh, made did not mean that everything was going to be smooth. He was not perfect, neither was I. Neither did we have a perfect relationship. But we worked through it, knowing that marriage is about 80-20. 80% meaning what the two of you share in common. The other 20% is what may divide you. So we increase the 80% and reduce the 20% in our lives to make it 0.2%. And in that way, we had a perfect marriage. My husband did surgery up to the end. Two hours, I turned from Mrs. to a widow. He was okay, he was not sick. We talked, he went on the day of, uh, on the 24th of January, he went out, bought things, uh, to buy things for the late brother's funeral. At two o'clock, he told me he was chesty. I told him to rest, to, uh, due to the stress, that he should rest. At 2.30, he asked me for a cough mixture and I just pointed to him, my own cough mixture, I pointed to him and walked away because I was ironing to go to work. And one thing I liked about my husband is that he allowed me to grow. So my professional career was something of importance to him. So I ironed to go to work while ironing, I heard him calling me in a stressful voice. When I went, I found out that he had collapsed and was, his head was almost knocking on the wall. I put my hand to the wall and then his tongue was coming out and I pressed down the tongue for some fresh air. I called the workers who were there, I screamed and they come and he, he, uh, he got revived put him on the floor. When he woke up, he said, I want to see my son. That's when I knew something was not going right because if he had said, call me Mike, that's different. Then he said, call me my son. Two weeks earlier, he had said, if anything ever happened, happened to him, I should call Professor Mwanda. So when I revived him the first time, I called Professor Mwanda and I told him, please, I need to see you urgently in my house. I didn't tell him what was wrong. I didn't want to cause an accident. Then I called my son, I asked him, where are you? He said, I'm in theater, what, are you operating or assisting? He said he was operating. I said, please hand over. Your father is not feeling fine. I think you better just come quietly, and he came. So when my son arrived, my husband spoke to my son. The, my son said, okay, fine. I, when he arrived, I said, your father has had a, a heart attack, and he said, but now he looks better. He said, there's no problem. You must be on admission. Where are your tracksuits? He's the one who pointed out the tracksuits to my son, and then my son started uh, making all the emergency calls. Sat up drunk, talked a bit, and then said he wanted to go for a long call. He was assisted, he went for the long call. Then Professor Mwanda came in, and he is the one who said, oh, you've arrived, please check my blood pressure. As the blood pressure was being checked, he had the second attack and we were rushed down there. And I think it must have been one of the most stressful things for my son when he had the third attack, knowing the implications of having a third attack. And when he finally had the fourth one, 
he passed, and all this happened within two hours. Just like a surgeon operates, finish, it's over. The following day, I dreamt he asked me, the way we used to have our discussions, pulling a seat and asking me, what do you think I would have done in this situation? It was best for you, it was best for me. I woke up and I said, I set you free. That is the story of Judge Albert Omare Magoha. Magoha, son of Magoha, has exited the stage when the ovation was loudest. Thank you for celebrating his life with me. Thank you very much.